The Niger Delta crisis has been a major threat to both socio-economic activities in the Niger Delta region of Nigeria. The presidential amnesty program commenced July 11, 2009, when a proclamation of amnesty for Niger Delta militants who had engaged in the armed struggle for a better deal in the nation's oil gains in granting unconditional amnesty for the agitators. The late President Omar Yeradwa opened a window for a period of 60 days for the agitators to lay down their arms in exchange for amnesty as a step towards redressing the adverse security situation in the oil-rich Niger Delta region, which had almost brought the nation's economy to its knees. Prior to the proclamation of amnesty, when guns boomed in the creeks of the Niger Delta, Nigeria lost over 1 million barrels of crude oil per day, estimated to be about 8.7 billion naira as of May 2009. In the last nine years since the introduction of the amnesty program, the Niger Delta region has witnessed relative peace, but not with pockets of agitations. While the amnesty program successfully paid off ex-militants with training and stipends, it was not able to provide them with jobs. The program raised expectations that it was not able to meet and these are fueling criminal activity among those unable to find work. These may equally have prompted the recent agitations by several ex-militant groups, including Niger Delta Agitators Network. The accused the presidential amnesty program offers, which is headed by Professor Charles Dokobo, of alleged neglect of beneficiaries of the presidential amnesty program. In this exclusive interview with Roots TV Nigeria, the leaders of the group accused the amnesty office of alleged corruption and stifling the process of reintegrating ex-militant. Take a listen. There has been impact, but because the people have not been properly orientated, oriented as a people, they don't even understand where we are going. You understand? I am happy for the government of President Mohamed Buhari to have even re restructured the process to the level we are today. The amnesty process is passing through a process where today somebody cannot just come up today and tell people that Mr. President will wake up one day and say they want to scrap the amnesty process. For that, I am very confident about this government. And I'm also confident about Charles' leadership. If only Charles Dokubo can sit down and sit down with the original beneficiary of the process because the amnesty process is made to transform and reintegrate people who are 30,000 persons from the, from the region. And if you take a very statistic, a very good statistic, 30,000 persons from the region is like people like in my local government, Southern Nigerian local government is not up to the percent of youth from a local government and compared to nine states in the region. That is why we have also severally been calling on the Niger Delta Ministry to sit up because the aims and objective of the Niger Delta Ministry, not just the Amnesty Office, is to address issue of insecurity, unemployment, and what human capital development. That is the reason of youth restiveness in the region. And we have not been able to address these issues in one decade after the surrounding of arms of this process. And I've been one of the people that went into the creek with Chief Jim Jephthah to discuss with these people that this is a genuine thing by federal government and the administration that they should also unconditionally accept the process, which they have unconditionally accepted. But the right of going back to the people, who are the people which the office have been created, the office have not impacted on the original owners and the reason why the office is being created. So Dr. Bosch should sit up. We don't believe in the pull him down symptom, which is the PhD, but it stands an opportunity as a kettlecraft. Someone who is into conflict resolution practice that he should not tow the lines of stakeholders that are towing him to crisis management. But crisis management is not a lasting solution, it's only going to trigger the process and trigger it to a very high level, which should be beyond our imagination as a people. The group said they will not give up the fight until their demands are met. For nine years now, we've accepted this peace, and there have not been any breach of security from our various camps. We have tried to maintain this peace all these years, telling our boys that the government will come to their aid, and every of their submission for empowerment will be fully addressed with time. Have they been impacted so far? Yes, you know, we as agitators, we need to relax our mind for them to confirm our genuity in accepting peace. Because if you just accept peace today and tomorrow they start giving you empowerment, they will think as if you want to go and buy arms to continue your agitation. But for these nine years, it has shown that we are ready for peace. 
We are not terrorists. All we are agitating for is the development of our region because we have been long sideline. Today, we accept amnesty for over nine years. Multinational companies are celebrating increment in oil production. There is peace in Niger Delta from the help of the leaders. Now, what we are saying is that the real beneficiaries have been sidelined. And the amnesty program meant for we, the ex-militants, has been ajacked. By who? I don't want to mention it. By the enemies of Niger Delta and Nigeria at large. Because we've had protests of different kinds. Change one essay from another. If you change that to Cuba today, the same thing will still go on. Have you seen an amnesty office whereby the CSO in that is now more powerful than the SA? That is to tell you that there is something fishing. There is something going underground. The SA sounds is tied. We are not telling you that the SA in person is a bad man. I've met him in one or two occasions. He had brilliant ideas. For him to have come out last year when we were agitating for social welfare security to be able to continue to maintain this peace because there is no way we can maintain peace with our empty pockets as leaders. While we were in our camp, we were paying our boys millions of naira. To agitate. Now the government told us that it is time for development, that with these arms in our hands, that development cannot come to the region, that we have to lay down the arms for development to take place. We had understanding with late Yaradua. We embrace the amnesty without taking to it because all we need is peace. We need to be given attention so that development can strive. So, but how can Dokubo's hand be on time, like you said? Yeah, that is why we are calling on the authority. That is why I said in the earlier state that Dokubo is only in charge. It's not the authority. To be in charge is not to be authoritative. We are calling on President Muhammad Dubuari, the NSA, to cop Charles Dokubo to order to do what is needful. All hands must be put on deck if things must be done rightfully. You have to consult these agitating leaders from various groups to know exactly what is the problem. Today, the CSA is from Niger Delta and is giving us barrier to communicate with the SA. It is the major problem. He has afflicted most of our people with injuries. As I'm talking to you now, we are afraid of going to the amnesty office. Because the CSA, yes, they attacked us on various occasions. I have photographed. Physical attack? Yes, with, look at I have pictures and uh, medical reports to confirm what I am saying. I'm not trying to overheat the system, but what we are trying to do is to prefer a solution. Because we are attacking the forces of evil, not the person doing evil. And we have been maintaining normal level of conflict. Let me tell you, in nonviolent, the federal government taught us in Kenya nonviolence. He said, we have normal level, perversive, and overt. Let me explain. The normal level is when you match me, I call your attention, you say sorry. We we'll keep on going peacefully. When I match you, I call your attention, and I say, and so what? It moves to perversive level, described as temporizing. If not well managed by the authority, it will move to overt level. That is management. We have experienced it in the Niger Delta, and we don't want to experience it anymore. The other time, Charles Dokubo said that he has given empowerment to women in the Niger Delta, and we, the agitators, have not benefited. They have what they call the Nigerian Army Wife Association, the Nigerian Police Wife Association. There is Niger Delta, ex -agi Niger Delta Agitators Wife Association. So our wife are coming to take their own empowerment. Because for over these years, they have not been part of any empowerment. When you go to the amnesty office, there, there is this language they used to speak, uh, Mr. Brown and others. Uh, is we, we are mandate, we, we, our mandate is 30,000 beneficiaries. Our mandate is 30,000 beneficiaries. What does that mean? That after the 30,000, the Niger Delta program has solved? No. What about the impacted communities? What about those that do not have hand to shoot gun? Are you telling them to go and carry arms before you include them into the program? We disarmed in 2011, and in 2013, we were accredited into the program. As I'm talking to you today, now, our foot soldiers have not been integrated into the program as the original plan entails. So we are using this medium to call on the authority, Amnesty International, the office of the NSA, the office of President Muhammadu Buhari, that we want to partner him officially to fight corruption in the Amnesty Office. What is going on in the Amnesty Office is not just corruption. According to Jonathan, uh, corruption is not stealing. Stealing is not corruption. Stealing is stealing and corruption is corruption. You understand? What is going on now in the amnesty office is called criminal conspiracy. Are they the, the yeah. yeah, these are the pictures of the ex-agitators, documented and accredited leaders. We went and asked our right peacefully in the amnesty office. This was what happened to us. The military officers, they attack us. Each time we go there, I have medical report. Anytime you invite me and the CSO to... Live TV, I will appear. I'm ready to speak my mind because enough is enough.
the presidential amnesty officially resulted in the demobilization of 30,000 militants, paying them allowances and providing training for a smaller number. It has noticeably reduced conflict in the region. More so, in a bid to upskill infrastructure development and promote peace in the Niger Delta, the federal government in the 2020 budget has made a provision of 155 billion era for some special interventions in the oil-rich region. They include the 80.88 billion era proposed for the Niger Delta Development Commission (NDDC) and the 65 billion era for reintegration of transformed ex-militant under the Presidential Amnesty Program. Roots TV effort to get response from the Presidential Amnesty Program Office proved abortive. However, the amnesty was not part of a coherent and coordinated peace building and reconciliation plan and is unlikely to be able to facilitate sufficient employment for demobilized militants. On this and other grounds, the sustainability of its achievement remains in question. Roots TV Nigeria.